as everybody, maybe not everybody knows, but in uh, America, uh, it apparently was something called Thanksgiving over the weekend. Um, not a big fan of the the history of the best of, of of the 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 event, but um, I think the thankfulness part of it counts. So first question for everybody is, what are you thankful for this year? Start with Chris. You got a lot to say. No, no, no. no. Let's talk no, about your wife. Right. Yeah, <laughs> my wife and my T-shirt that I'm wearing here. Stand up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're a music fan or even vaguely music fan, you'll notice this, and you may notice on the back of the tour dates, which is still on the way, because I was That's in nice. Germany a week ago seeing these guys play live. Um, Thanks to my wife, who sent me there as a surprise for my birthday. So that's a pretty good thing to be thankful for. Christmas wife is best wife on the planet, award winner. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, <laughs> off the market. So sorry, guys. Just saying. Yeah, I shall. Uh, I should say a technical thing though. Uh, I was in uh, Sydney a week before that at Web Directions uh, Summit, and I saw two talks which have changed the way I think about the world. One was about how we deal with AI, the other one was um, CSS blocks, which even when you Google it, you can't find it. Um, it's basically the next thing from CSS modules into something else, um, where it's probably going to change how we write code, which is fascinating, but that was good. Aisha. I'm actually thankful for a lot of things, so, but the ones that are on top of my mind is, um, uh, I think the things that I've learned this year, and also the travelings that I made, the friends that I made, and also, um, you know, a strong body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tian. Uh, yeah. mm. Amazing maths. Sorry. Wait. You said amazing maths. Amazing maths? Amazing math. Oh, yeah. Amazing I think I'm thankful for my math. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember my math, I guess. Yeah. So Just thankful for your past teachers. Yeah, actually, this year I've been doing a lot of math. Yeah, if, if you follow me on, on Twitter, I've been doing a lot of uh, projects, uh, including like 3D stuff and 2D stuff and wow. yeah, like 3JS and all a lot of things. Yeah. It's a lot of like, I think like this year is like the year of 3D, right? You know, thanks to like AR and VR and stuff. So I started learning that and and turns out it's very complicated math. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. You know, I, I, I'm not like, complicated math always like makes me confused and stuff like, you know, like, but then I managed to like do it. I think I'm thankful because of that. Yeah. Out of curiosity, how far did you get in maths in high school or yeah. university? Uh, I'm actually pretty good in math in school. Okay. Yeah, I'm, one, I'm always one of the top Students in the school, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The reason but, I ask is because yeah. anything you learn, if you don't practice it, it just disappears. Yeah, that's why I, learned. I forgot everything. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot everything, <laughs> so so now I have to like bring it back again. Yeah, and yeah, if it's like troublesome, I'll like, just forget it. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, a lot of projects. That's it. Yes. Yeah. I'm thankful for each and every one of you because without uh, without you, we would not have made it to two years. So thank you all for being here. I know I say this a lot, but really, really, thank you for being here. Um, so how was your 2017 in terms of front-end development? Do you want to go first? Huh? First like that, like that. 2017. Uh, in terms of what? Yeah, cool. uh, like front-end stuff. Front-end development. <laughs> <laughs> Like anything memorable that you built or any particular front-end technology that was interesting to you this year? So we want to oh. be like current. <laughs> this year? Mm. Oh, the front-end is always a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Did anything stand out particularly? Uh, stand out? Stand out. <laughs> a lot of things stand out this year. <laughs> Just pick one. Yeah, a lot of things stand out. Uh, I, I, I think it's, it's all this. I mean, like, this, I think this year is like, this year and last year, I think. Mm. It's like when people start to like say that, oh, I have too many things to learn, right? Mm. And like, there's too many new frameworks and stuff like that. But for me, I'm like actually okay with all these things because I always embrace change. Yeah. 
so that that's one thing that that I that, that's how I learn things uh, you know like for me I, I will always continuously learn things mm-hmm. so it's like new things coming I'm like okay fine I'll you know I'll, I'll look at it if, when I have time if I don't have time then don't look at it yeah mm-hmm. so in terms of front end stuff there's like nothing really catches my eye you know, like yeah <laughs> seriously that it's always because for me it's like I, I've been working on front end for a long time right it's always that cycle of like, oh, whatever I learned this year will be deprecated in the next two years. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, so I've been doing, doing front end for the past like 10, 10 years. I think you're longer, right? Mm. <laughs> it's like everything I learned in the past, right, are now like, like gone. And I'm like, hmm, okay. I think, I think that's fine now, you know, like, I think it's this cycle that makes me feel alive. There's something very <laughs> zen about this. <laughs> and I think this is a good mindset to have, especially if you go on the web, because it's easy to get overwhelmed because so many new things come. Yeah. But like as Chion says, the only constant is change. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? So professionally, I've been working a lot on performance mm. at Wiki. <laughs> Personally I've, been, uh, personally, I've been working a lot on animations mm-hmm. and understanding things under the hood. For example, like GSAP and basically how they actually do things in GSAP and just playing around. Actually, I'm going to write a blog post about one of my experiments soon. So, yeah. Subscribe to Aisha's blog, follow her <laughs> on Twitter. And if Not you in want real life. Following people in real life is bad. <laughs> if you uh, want to hear for the one talk that she gave at Talk CSS about her New Zealand trip, that's very interesting because she talks about um, getting into uh, CSS animations. And it's, it's really great, especially if you've always thought it was hard and wanted to try but thought it was too complicated. That's the very good talk, which is on... Engineers SG, so you can go and look for it. <laughs> and yes, sir? Um, I've been working at my current company for a bit over a year, which has been really different for me because it's my first time as an engineering manager. Mm-hmm. Um, I've built and hired, a, I've built a front end team hiring lots of people. Um, started out into React, well, we started last year, but lots of stuff this year, React, and all sorts of new things. Uh, the thing that really sticks to me is I've spent a lot of time debugging browser bugs, uh, finding and, <laughs> and fixing browser bugs, um, which is horrible, but uh, it, it's good when you complete the cycle. And there's one that I'm finishing off at the moment that I started with a couple of weeks ago, which is a weird one in Safari, where focus and blur events fire repeatedly for no good reason at all. Um, took a lot of effort, but out of that I've filed a WebKit bug which has turned into a radar so we'll never see it again. Thank you Apple for your <laughs> horribly <laughs> opaque ways. Um, I've created an open source library with my solution with a React version since that's what I'm working in and now I'm forking the date picker where we found the bug originally where it was exhibited. Um, but this is awesome being able to contribute in that way while at the same time fixing a production bug because Safari crashes if you use our date picker. Um, and it's not even our fault. But this is, yeah, it, it's been quite different where um, I've taken more of a support role for my team, which has given me the chance to tackle the really, really difficult things like that. And debugging browsers is not easy. Do not recommend. Zero stars. It's great. Um, okay, for me, I do have a, a specific front end thing and that is the release of CSS Grid. So um, I am a CSS nerd. I read specifications. And uh, I think 2017 to me was quite landmark simply because CSS Grid was officially released. Um, I have been very lucky that I got the chance to talk about CSS a lot this year and Grid featured in a lot of my talks because I really believe that CSS Grid is going to change the way that we build layouts. And uh, we'll talk a bit more about speaking because I think all four of us on the panel have had some kind of speaking experience other than this funky little meetup. So we will talk a bit about that. It's a segue, guys. It's a segue for an announcement that we are having at the end. So hang in there. So that's, that's great. What could that possibly be? Well, what could it possibly be? Uh, okay, I have another funny question. Uh, you can choose to answer or not. Any major screw-ups you want to talk about this year? If don't have, can say don't have. It's fine. Then you have a wonderful year. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn. Ah. 
Uh, many, because all the time. Um, what can I think of that's memorable <laughs> anyway? Um, okay, this is a pass, option. I can't yeah, think this is a really passable. Think, but if I'll, I'll everybody passes, that's great. I can't think of anything like okay, that. Everyone's so sure. <laughs> she never makes <laughs> mistakes. No, no, I do. <laughs> I just couldn't. I mean, there are many mistakes mm, for me, yeah. but. Does it have to be web related? Oh, broaden the category. Okay, now. so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it has happens quite recently. I strain a rotator cuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's true. It's because of a handstand thing that I did, but I'm okay now. <laughs> yeah. You're too fit for your own code. Uh, code wise. Maybe some weird animation thing. Okay, fair enough, it's fine. This yeah. Is, yeah, this is just a random question yeah. in this little list. Do you want to Uh, can be anything, right? Yeah, anything. I think conference-wise or like... Can come? Because I, I, if some of you know, like I always go to conferences uh, by myself. Uh, yeah, I, I like to attend, I don't speak, yeah. So that I can sit behind and look at the speakers, how they perform and stuff. It's really like ther ther therapeutic, whatever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> therapeutic. Yeah. And then like, I think this year I went to the Hong Kong, uh, the WebConf Asia, and uh, there's one called DevRelCon in Japan. Uh, I think the screw up is like both times it's like summer, so it's very hot. <laughs> so it's like I travel there and then it's like, oh, summer. Oh. It's like I go there sweat uh, every day. I'm like, oh, okay. Next time I need to like plan my my Winter timing. Schedule, yeah. Right. So it's like I go again. Oh, hot again. I go again. Oh, hot again. Oh, seriously. Like okay. Then I don't travel anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. So that probably next year I need to plan better. Yeah. yeah. I've thought of how I've mess messed up massively <laughs> speaking Come conferences. Um, I gave a workshop in Manila a couple of months ago, and how long was it? Three hours. Yeah. I finished in two. Huh? And the reason this happened is I anticipated, I was in uh, Manila where if you've been there, the uh, internet connection, connectivity is pretty average. It can just cut out at any given notice. Um, I anticipated lots of things to go wrong and allowed time for that. I never actually anticipated it not going wrong. Every single person in the room followed everything I went through perfectly. Some of them were struggling in times, but they called out like everything went perfectly and it failed because it went perfectly. It was terrible. Yeah, I have another one. Yes, please come. <laughs> it's a, uh, confessions. I mean, uh, yeah, it's confessions. <laughs> <laughs> so, Luigi was talking about speaking, but like I had an experience this year in a conference. Uh, in mobile area conference in Norway where it's kind of weird the way they do questions and answers. So usually in a conference you just ask a question, right? And then as a speaker you just answer. So um, every time when you, they, I don't know how they do their recordings, but they kind of tell you to like, as a speaker, you need to repeat the question. Say for example, you ask me a question, then I have to repeat them, and then, then I answer. So every time someone asks me a question, I keep on forgetting to repeat. And, they, and the cameraman has said, oh, could you repeat the question and then answer again? So I have to do it. It was, it was really uh, an awkward situation for me. So, yeah. Okay, my, my memorable screw up, also conference related. Um, so I, like I mentioned, I, I, I did a bit of speaking this year. So one of the conferences that I, I uh, spoke at uh, was You Gotta Love Front End. And this, I, I got there uh, from uh, submitting CFP. The thing about submitting CFPs is that you can submit multiple, that's fine. Um, I am not the most organized person on the planet, as you know, if you've come for the past <laughs> two years. Organization is not either of our strong suits. So um, the way I do my CFPs is when I feel like it. So I'm like, I'm bored with work. What can I do? Like, oh, let's submit a CFP because why not? Turns out I actually submitted like two different topics for this talk. I forgot about the first one. So when I received the, 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 the email saying that, oh, congratulations, we paid your talk. I started preparing, you know, because at least have to, <laughs> you know, conference people are paying, like, okay, I must be a responsible adult. So I started preparing and then when I saw the announcement uh, for, for, for my speaker profile, I was like, that this is not the talk I'm preparing. <laughs> so oh yeah, so it was. It's like, I'm like, hey, something 
Wait a minute. <laughs> so then only I realized that I had submitted the uh, the earlier topic that I submitted actually got it, not the second one. Like, oh wow. It's like yes. Comments rewrite. <laughs> How much time did you have? Yeah. A month. A month. Okay. Oh. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Um so segue into uh speaking. Um so one of the things that was uh, that happened earlier last month, I think we had this thing called a, a global. It was a, a, a how, encouraging people to speak at mm. at conferences, event thing. Um, because if you 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 guys know of this person called Thomas Gorison, he is the man behind JSConf, and he is the reason why JSConf has JSConf JS Asia. Asia has been in Singapore since 2014. Uh, not having one this year simply because we needed a bit more time. Since and it's so oh, it's yeah. actually January 2018 this year. Um, it's gonna be, I think the biggest one to date. And one of the things that we would want to have is more local speakers in the sense that we, at least in Southeast Asia, the number of web conferences you can count on maybe one hand, which is sad. Because if you're in Europe or if you're in America, you grab a calendar, you close your eyes and you throw a stone, you're gonna hit a day where there's a web conference. Not so much here. So what we wanna have is that, and even though you know conferences have videos, none of you watch the videos. Trust me, nobody watches the videos. So it, it makes a difference if you attend a conference in person. So what we want is to not only have speakers from Southeast Asia rep represented in international conferences, we also want to have high quality conferences here. And we also want to sort of like boost local speakers. So one of the things that um, we want to have, so there's going to be another event uh, for this speakers thing I will go and think I, I, I'll go dredge it up and we'll share it on uh, meetup.com and everything is if you have you are interested to be a speaker um, but you don't know like you're a bit shy about submitting CFPs um, you uh, you know I mean nobody likes getting rejected it's just I have especially thick skin and a lot of time on my hands so I'm just gonna spam everybody CFP I understand not everybody is like me so yeah if you need help in coming up with a CFP or, or topic or anything I, uh, I think this is something that we should all help each other with um, yeah so that, that's that's one thing um, so that's a long well, question. Yeah, it's not a question. <laughs> now it's the question. That was a, like a commercial break. Um, anything happening in 2018 for anybody in terms of the speaking side of things? <laughs> <laughs> okay, chocolate eating means no, no, no worries. Okay. Anything yeah. yourself? Um, not sure yet. Okay. You, sir, yet. Uh, have something to talk about? Uh, workshop. Um... In my past life, even in my current life, I, I previously uh, led a dev team of three people and we looked after a hundred sites, which we maintained, no trouble. Um, so I'm doing a, a workshop on scalable CSS, basically how to you know, deal with so many different themes and still keep your sanity. Uh, so that's attached to JSConf, which we'll be talking about shortly. Um. And like him, I also will be involved in JSConf Asia, which is going to be happening January 25th to 27th. Uh, yes, it's it's called JSConf Asia, but there will be CSS related talks in it. This is purely from a marketing perspective that Thomas made this decision to fold CSS Conf Asia into JSConf Asia to make the um, to make it extra big. Uh, uh, there, it, it's it's a it's a marketing reason for it, but don't just just because it's called JSConf doesn't mean there will be no CSS. Mm -hmm. So don't worry if that's one of your concerns. And okay, segue time. So uh, moving on, uh, the the next part of this is that. <laughs> 
together with JSCOM, there's always fringe events uh, like leading up to JSCOM, which is like the big thing. The week before, there'll always be uh, what happens is that everybody will, everybody in most of the, the meetup communities, we will sort of like, okay, we'll agree to sort of host all our events like in the week leading up to JSCOM. So if we have international attendees, they can sort of like attend all the different uh, meetups and the Every language seems to have its own meetup because Singapore is great at hosting meetups thanks to wonderful people. So we are doing that as well. So announcement time. Okay, sorry, I have to flip a couple of slides. So <laughs> I don't care. Y'all can look at my beautiful slides. So our announcement is. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so irritating, right? Like I'm the I'm the most annoying person on the planet, guys. So oh yes. Oh my god, please tell me. So annoying. Oh my god, it's so annoying. Okay. Never coming back to this meetup ever. Before you go too far, again. basically no one knows about this, so like yeah. I think there are about three people who actually do. So on January twenty third, twenty eighteen, we are having the biggest Talk CSS event to date, which is Talk CSS Max Content Edition. It's something that we've never done before. It's going to be a paid event because we are bringing in international speakers. So we prepared beforehand, we have launched this. So this is part of Deaf Fest Asia 2018. Not sure if it's called that, I'm going to call it that anyway. It's a three hour CSS extravaganza. It's going to be at Microsoft Singapore. We are estimating capacity for 150 people. It's yes, it is a paid event, but that's because that's so that we can support like really nice international names. For example, Mandy Michael. Talk about her quick. Um, she's an Australian, which is unusual. Um, she's first, which is even more unusual. I'm gonna draw something. <laughs> Be serious. Um, Mandy has done some awesome, awesome stuff with uh, creative fonts and things like that. And not as uh, Hui Jing was talking about um, variable fonts and um, what's the other one? Can't remember. Um, Mandy's being busy actually implementing that stuff in the browser now, uh, without like, having to worry <coughs> about what. what version it's going to land in. So she's done some extraordinary experimental stuff with CSS that you can actually take home and use in your projects, which is amazing. So she will be opening. Um, okay, we'll skip that first. Then we, then we have the... <laughs> come back. The Unikitten, which we don't know. Um, we may have another international speaker. We may have some of you there. We have a slot, basically, where we can fit in uh, two or three shorter talks, or maybe one longer one, depends on how our budgeting goes. So the part where I talked about speaking is relevant. So if you're interested to speak, you you we definitely be able to fit you in, no problem. If you need help coming up with a topic, we'll help you also because we really want to encourage more local speakers. And because Engineers SG records everything, you can use this. You can use this to sort of submit for in other international conferences because usually they want a video of you talking. So Engineers SG helps a lot in this regard in that you have it like you don't have to get someone to film you as if you are some like you know actor looking for work. No, Engineers SG takes care of this for you. I think that's a big advantage of being in Singapore. Okay, next is uh, another one of our yeah this our local boy done good. <laughs> International speaker Zell, he's going to be one of the slots. And our closing keynote is John Elsop. In case you don't know John Elsop, he's the guy who wrote the seminar article called The Tao of Web Design. Uh, Chris knows him, so Chris can talk about him. <laughs> John's been doing this for, I think, slightly longer than me. Uh, he's older than me as well, which is good because then I can laugh at him. Um, <laughs> He currently runs Web Directions in Australia, which is a series of conferences. He uh, single-handedly wrote uh, Style Master in the early 2000s, which was at the time one of the best CSS editors around. It was before you had any style hinting or anything else like that. Um, he's now a full-time conference organizer and everything. 
and I still don't understand why he wants to actually come and speak for us, but he will, which is remarkable. His um, experience is extraordinary, so he's going to be closing for us, which is just amazing. So if you click buy tickets, how much would you pay for this anonymous person? <laughs> what you're asking me? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Don't pay one million. I didn't expect such a question, you know. <laughs> we're basically we've basically taken CSS Conf, cut it in half, and because we don't have to worry about a lot of the overhead, we can we sell tickets. We need it ten times cheaper. For only twenty five dollars, which hopefully is quite reasonable. We're oh, doing it during the day, so you basically you need like half an afternoon off work, and twenty five dollars gets you in for uh, four really awesome talks. Um, Plus coffee. Yeah, and stuff. Um, yeah, so this is live now. Please buy tickets. Yay. Yeah, tell your friends <laughs> who are not here. And yeah, so uh, one last thing is... Okay, actually, the second last thing, penultimate last thing, is that if you use the code Singapore CSS, 20% off your JSConf ticket. This is... Not an image, this is CSS and HTML only. Oh. Thank you guys. <laughs>